It's time to take your seat at the table. Find out how with Vusi Tembeguayo as we discuss ideas that matter. A catalyst for bold action. Awesome, awesome tagline, internal stories. You know, when I first heard internal stories, I thought about the conversations that we have as peers, as friends, as colleagues. However, you kind of shift it a bit and you speak about the internal stories that we have with ourselves, which actually are the conversations that we have with ourselves in our, in our minds and the integrity like material things that enter that we consume whether it's knowledge whether it's um, opinions assumptions um, facts um, it's the integrity information that we consume each and every day whether we are subconsciously aware of it or not so i feel like it's a very lovely concept and may i please ask how did you get the message icon at the bottom to appear on your podcast Hello, family, and welcome to another episode of the VT Podcast. Thank you so much for that kind uh, testimonial. I think you're absolutely right. By the way, um, even though you're talking about an, an episode that's admittedly, you know, what must be a few months old, one of the things I love about uh, this VT Podcast is, how do I say this? I feel like we discuss concepts that are uh, not time-bound. I feel like we discuss concepts that are universal and timeless. And so you can go back or you can join our family now, start at the very beginning, and you will enjoy the content and concepts still. Because unlike 99% of the podcasts out there where people talk about things that are in the now, they're having conversations about current affairs and what's happening in the world, we don't do that here. What we do here is we talk about timeless principles that are universal that can make us better human beings that can leave the world a better place and so i love the idea that you listened to internal stories and you could resonate with it nonetheless so let's start that again hello family <laughs> by the way i've got to tell you that's now that now permeates my whole house like my my kids will wake up in the morning and go daddy yes my boy hello family <laughs> it like permeates my whole house i absolutely love it i didn't realize when we started with it that it would become such a an iconic expression right but um all by god's grace really that you guys have taken to it as well as you've taken to it so thank you so much for that for that testimonial and by the way you've asked the question about the messaging icon at the bottom of the podcast here's how i did it i have a kick-ass tech team I wish I could say it's me. I have no clue how the team has done it. My job is to arrive, stand behind a microphone, do what I do, leave, and the rest of the magic, the team at Sound and Sounds puts together. So uh, it's them really who should take the credit. This week, ladies and gentlemen, family, I wanted to talk to you today about the snowball effect. The snowball effect. See, the snowball effect is the idea that things start small, but if you allow the same uh, direction and rate of progression to continue, things compound to the point where like a mega snowball, at the instance at which you try to stop it at the bottom of the hill, you have no chance because of the amount of velocity that is gathered. What are the areas of our lives where we can expand, use, and test the snowball effect? And how does the snowball effect actually work? So, the year is 2017. I'm speaking at the Café del Mar. I was launching my maiden book, The Magna Carta of Exponentiality, which, as we speak, has edged on just close on 500,000 copies sold. What a number. And by the way, to the VT community, thank you guys, like I appreciate it. It's incredible that we've reached that number of units in both the Magna Carta and the VT book. So I'm launching the Magna Carta of Exponentiality at the Café del Mar in Spain, Barcelona. I'm in a room that's booked full. I want you to picture the scene. Massive auditorium that seats 6,500 people and the entire room is full. I'm speaking and launching my book, The Magna Carta. 
And the question I'm asking myself as I'm standing backstage working with Lisa and the team who were doing the entire design of the stage and the design of the iconography, my presentation, the look, the feel, the flow, we worked months just on the storyboard around how I was going to deliver the messaging. The question I'm asking myself at that point in time is simply this. How did I get here? I think a lot of us really have instances in our lives where we look at somebody we like, whose work we admire, and whose results we envy, and we focus on the wrong thing. You focus on the result, not the process. You ever been to the gym, and you get there, and there's somebody who's ripped, and they lean, and they, every single muscle on their body shows, and as they move, every single other muscle that wasn't showing is showing. You ever seen somebody who's so physically fit that you see muscles in parts of the body you didn't know had muscles? Now, when you're standing there next to this person in those mirrors at the gym that always make you either look wider or thinner, depending on which mirror you go to and which gender is most prone to using that mirror, by the way, if you're not aware, the way gyms are designed is the area of the gym where females are generally most prone to practice. The mirrors are built in such a way that they use the mirrors that slim you down. In the areas of the gym where the males are most likely to work out, the mirrors are built in such a way that the mirrors are most likely to widen you. Because that's what we're going for. Guys want to look bigger and bulkier and buffer and ladies want to look slimmer, right? So even in the mirror at the gym where you're doing the work, the illusion of the outcome is already being sold to you. You are not yet that, but you appear to be. Does that make sense? And so one of the things you learn then in life is the importance of creating constantly the illusions of the end point that you're getting to. I want to park on this because it's so important and a material part of the snowball effect. Create the illusion of the things you are not yet reached or the point you have not yet reached, but at the current state of your life. Now, recently, my younger brother, Kwame Opoku, flew to South Africa to come and spend some time with me. Kwame, and he goes by futurist Kwame on social media, He's been following my work for over a decade. This is a true story. There is not a video of mine that Kwame has not watched and studied, but I mean meticulously. And so in one of the days, Kwame and I are having a meeting. We're having a breakfast meeting. And I'm talking to Kwame about this, this Web3 investment company, which, by the way, we've now coined X Ventures. E with an X at the, at the top, kind of where you would put the N as the exponential on any number ventures, right? And so we're sitting there having a meeting. And where do you think I took Kwame for the meeting? Went and picked him up. We got in my V12 and we drove in Joburg and we arrived at Daytona, which is where I buy most of my supercars. But we arrived at Daytona and they've got a beautiful, beautiful um, restaurant on the showroom floor called Naked. And I took him there for breakfast. He traveled with another young man. His name is His Excellency Moses Arthur. And Moses walks in with this beautiful Ghanaian accent. And he says, in, 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 he says, in the Bible, I can't remember who it was, but I think it was one of the kings who'd had a lady come and visit him. And the lady, after she'd spent time with the king, said something like this. She said, my spirit has left my body. So he, said, he arrives and he says, just like it says in the Bible, as I'm looking at these cars, and I want you to picture the scene. We're sitting in the middle of this naked rest of this restaurant named Naked. And around us is Rolls-Royce, McLaren, Aston Martin, and Pagani Zonda. These are the cars that are parked around us. So he's looking at this, he goes, my spirit has left my body. Kwame replies and he says, it shall never be well with poverty. It shall never be well with poverty, my friend. And so what it is that I was doing in that moment is I was taking the lads to the moment we are not yet reached but the moment we are aspiring to. Sometimes you've got to take yourself into the spaces where your snowball will lead you, even though you don't yet deserve to be in that space. One of the many things I used to do when I was growing up is I always used to be the guy, I wanted to be the guy that would own like a stable of horses. My kids today ride horses, by the way, but I always wanted to be the guy who would live this beautiful villa, you know, on either the south of France or like rural Italy. And at the back, I would have a stable 
with, like, stallions. I've always wanted to be that guy. So one of the things I do, true story, when I'm trying to inspire myself, is I will visit stables. And I'll just walk around and smell the horse dung and look at these beautiful creatures, trot as they do. Take myself into the space about which I am aspiring, even though I have not yet reached the point where I should be there. That's how you create the mental snowball. So let's cast our mind back then to my example about, so you're in the gym and you're seeing this person working out, and they look a physical specimen. And in your mind immediately, you go, well, I don't look like that. Then, therefore, I have no chance of ever looking like that. What you don't realize is that person doesn't look like that naturally either. What you're looking at is the result, the outcome. What you should be studying is the process. See, results may vary. If you ever watch those Verimark ads or Glowmail ads, right? Right at the bottom as they're selling you, and if you buy this, you will also get 10% off. Right at the bottom, there is a little disclaimer that says, results may vary. Right? Or was it Kanye West in the rap who says, results may vary, king like T.I., but in the shot, Larry. In fact, it was probably Jay-Z, right? But the point about it is results may vary. So you and I can go through the same process and not reach the same point. The thing, though, is if you are aspiring for the life of something, what you really want to ground yourself in is not the outcome. It's the process. So you want to run a very successful hedge fund, say. You want to build your own Bridgewater, although admittedly you shouldn't right now because the Bridgewater hedge fund is not performing particularly well. Ray Dalio and his team are under a ton of pressure because some of, the, some of the large institutional pension funds are actually thinking of calling their capital out of Bridgewater because it's really underperformed. But let's say you want to run your own Bridgewater. You want to be a Nancy Wood and run your own innovation fund. So let's say you want to do that. Let's say you want to be the young man that built the uh, apparel, a uh, gym apparel company, Gym Shark, and you want to reach a billion dollars in sales in less than 10 years. Let's say you want to do that. Let's say you want to be uh, Gary Vee and you want to have a following of over 100 million people on social media. Let's say you want to do that. Let's say you want to be a guy who's in his 50s, but is physically at the peak of his life, mentally at the peak of his space, and also in a career sense at the peak of his career, you want to be Dwayne Johnson The Rock. Let's say you want to do that. The natural human predisposition is to obsess over the result. The smart thing to do is to obsess over the process. Let's say you want to be the fastest man alive. You want to take on Usain Bolt's 958. The natural human predisposition is to focus on the 958. The smart thing to do is to focus on the 20 years it took him to run it. So here's the question for you. What are you focusing on? What are you emulating? What are you studying? Are you following the person who inspires you and looking at how they dress and then thinking to yourself, how do I dress in a like manner? Or are you thinking, what are they communicating when they're dressing like this? Which stage of their life are they at to dress like this? Which stage of their life am I at and how should I present and represent myself? Process versus result. So let's drill down to it. Let's assume you were to focus on process. What are the things you would focus on? The first, before we even get to the desired outcome, is you first have to start by understanding your motivation. Most of us are driven by where we're going, not why we want to go there. I think the peak of unhappiness, the reason in the world today there are so many people who have so much and yet feel so empty, the reason in the world today we have all of this capital proliferation and wealth and yet people are so deeply unhappy is because we're all focused on where we're going, not why we want to go there. Because to focus on why I want to go there would mean that I need to know me and I need to understand me and I need to understand what drives me. And once I understand that, I need to double down on being that person. I need to double down on being loyal to who I am and who I'm becoming and who my talents and gifts create and morph out for me to be. 
a personal example. When I first started our venture capital company, I was like, you know, we want to be big and we want to manage all this money and we want to fund all these entrepreneurs and founders and tech startups and all the rest of it. But the truth of it is a lot of it was driven by ego. A lot of it was like, I want to be the big guy in the room. I want to be the guy that matters. Once I focused less on what we wanted to be, which by the way is important, don't get me wrong, the result is important. But once I focused less on what we wanted to be, and I focused more on why, the game changed. See, if we want to be the firm that partners with the builders building the future of Africa, then I don't mind having a difficult quarter. I don't mind having a difficult month. I don't even mind having a difficult 24 months. Because in the arc of the lifetime of our firm, what's a difficult week? If you're building a business that's going to last 10 generations, what's a difficult 10 weeks? What's a difficult 10 months of delay in your progress? The minute you understand things in the context about what you're building, then the process begins to make sense. And so the question for you is, are you focusing on the right thing? And are you focusing on doing the right thing? So, I'm standing backstage and Luke is about to introduce me. Luke is this incredibly young, talented presenter. He comes from the United Kingdom and he was the guy who was emceeing the event in, in Spain. And I remember meeting Luke and told me his name is Luke. And what do you think I said to him? I said, I said the following, I said, Luke, I am your father. <laughs> Star Wars fans will know exactly what I'm talking about, right? So anyway, that's, that's how I used to greet him every time I'd say, Luke. I am your father. <laughs> Shout out to Luke, by the way, if he's listening to this. So Luke is now introducing me. I'm standing backstage and he says, ladies and gentlemen, all the way here from South Africa, it gives me great pleasure to welcome our headline speaker today, Mr. Vusi Tembewayo. And the focus is on the fact that here I stand, a young boy who grew up in the southernmost tip of the darkest continent in the world, speaking in a room of close on 10,000 people in Spain, breaking boundaries, setting records. How did I get there? I'll tell you how I got there. It took us eight years of intense research putting the book, the Magna Carta, together. It took me eight months of just thinking about what to call the book, what kind of name would work. I was, ex I was inspired by Mark, who was my lecturer, and started telling us the story about 1215, and the farmer John who marched on the steps of the king, and when he arrived, the king declared for them a new charter, the Magna Carta, and I was like, that's such a beautiful story. Then I started reading more about it, and I thought, this book is about a new charter for the rest of humanity. I want to call it the Magna Carta of Exponentiality. So the process that took me there, it took my design team six months of intense work, storyboarding, archetyping, getting the right types of fonts, content, getting the right flow in the storyboard, the right type of music, the staging of the entire thing, just for what would be that 45 minutes. It took that long. But for me, personally, it took everything. It took weekends that I didn't get to spend with my family. It took sleepless nights. It took sacrificing a career in corporate and thinking that I could build something on my own that would become globally relevant. It took taking huge amounts of personal financial risk and almost losing everything. See, the reason people don't get to where they want to go isn't because you don't have the desire, it's because you don't have the resilience. You don't have the tenacity. You're focused on the outcome. You're not focused on the process. Back now, to that person at the gym, this archetypal bodybuilding looking individual who without a flex, every single muscle moves just by them tilting their body a single degree. 
when you look at them and you look at their tone, their shred, their conditioning, what did it take? Years of training and not missing training because they didn't feel like it. Years of eating foods that they eat for, for function, not for taste. Years of commitment for you to enjoy them for that single moment. If you want to create a snowball in your life and you want to get to the stage in your life where the momentum of what you built is so great that it opens the door for you before you even arrive there, it's going to take that kind of process. So if you were to, very quickly, how would you break down somebody's process? So the first thing I said is understand why. Why do you want to do what you want to do? And make sure that the reason you want to do it is important. Why do you want to do the thing you want to do? The second part of understanding process, and this is the conversation we don't have often enough, is what are you willing to sacrifice? See, if you're not having that conversation with yourself, then when the moment of sacrifice comes, you're constantly going to be in battle because you haven't prepared yourself for that sacrifice. So for me, I'll tell you guys, what have I sacrificed? Well, the truth is that I'm a bit of a loner and I've sacrificed that. I've sacrificed not being the guy's guy. I don't do boys nights out. I don't show up at people's barbecues or people's brides. I don't keep company with a group of friends where we've known each other for 10 years. I can't do, I would like to, but the truth is that the rate at which I move means I often outgrow people in my life. There are very few people I have the privilege of keeping a relationship with over a period of time. But that was a sacrifice I was willing to make. Which sacrifice are you willing to make? Because I promise you now, it's not the process that kills people. It's the inability to make the sacrifice to stay loyal to that process. And then finally, to want is human. It's completely human to want, to aspire for, to aim for. But here is what is godly. It's not to want, it's to give. And so if you really want to build your own snowball, here is the question I want you to ask yourself. What are you giving and to whom? Most of us want to reach the point we want to reach in our lives just because it's cool. It'll be great to get there. I want to be rich. Why? Just because I want money. I want to be fit. Why? Just because I want to be fit. But here's the real question. What are you giving? Who are you inspiring? What are you leaving better than you found it? So, family, friends, here is your homework for this week. First, crystal clarity on where you want to go. Second, immerse yourself in the space you want to go to, even though you don't deserve to be there yet. Visit those spaces. Go to those places. Keep company with people who are like in mind. Third, understand why you want to go there. Really the true intent. Fourth, now that you've understood why you want to go there, ask yourself what are you willing to sacrifice? And fifth, having sacrificed all of this, ask yourself, what are you willing to give and to whom? Once you understand process, result is a natural outcome. So, family, friends, that is our podcast for this week. I wish you all an amazing week. Sayonara. We hope that you've drawn valuable lessons from this week's podcast. To partner with us, visit mygrowthfund.co.za or email info at mygrowthfund.co.za.